Another absolutely beautiful day here in paradise. Um, rain's been scarce lately. I haven't seen much of it. That's kind of nice, except I have to water the nursery. But yeah, we're getting a lot of clear, blue, sunny weather. Breezes. I imagine by now that uh, Sahara dust storm that was coming across the U.S. is heading this way, too. Um, yeah, it's really nice. But that's right here. And I know, I suppose, maybe the rest of you were hoping Bill's going to talk about his garden. Well, yeah, okay. The onions were great. I brought in some marvelous sweet corn. I've been picking a lot of string beans. Peppers are doing really good, etc., etc. Tomatoes, papayas, and so. Um, yeah, it's it's been good. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm back on the warpath about this virus. Yeah, anybody who's been paying attention to the channel lately knows I posted a video called Organic Mind Control uh, discussing the possibility that the uh, COVID virus, like other viruses, does have an effect on the way we think. Well, after I posted that video, uh, one of the viewers got back to me with a comment who is a biologist who apparently had had the same thought and, well, he claimed he'd gotten beat up on Facebook for bringing it up. That's not surprising. Uh, you won't see me there. <laughs> but uh, apparently I'm not the only guy that thought about this. And so he sent me an article um, from Psychology Today, which is a you know, pretty reputable magazine in our country. Um, and the article was about a... Uh, um, Epidemiologist uh, named uh, Reber, or I think is how the name is pronounced. I, I don't know how you it's spelled R E I B E R, Chris. Um, back in 2010, uh, she had the idea that common flu strain, that the common flu strain was making people sociable in the first 48 to 72 hours when it was communicable, but we weren't really seeing many symptoms. And so during this period of time where you're kind of dangerous to spread the common flu, um, a study was done to see if people actually are made to feel more sociable by the virus. So that, in other words, it will spread better. Well, it turns out that they were able, by using the flu vaccine, because the flu vaccine has uh, killed virus particles in it, a pretty good load of them, that we get some of the effects from the flu when we take the shot, but not all. And so what they did was they had people who took the flu shot answer a questionnaire about how many people they came in contact with during the three days after they received the flu shot. Well, it turned out that almost all of the people in the study doubled their contacts. The usual was 54 contacts, but after getting the flu shot, they averaged 99 contacts. Um, you know, it's, it's not 100%, but it really does indicate the possibility that the common flu virus makes you sociable. Now, when I read the article, I went, oh, man, I remember this. I, I haven't had the flu that often, but I have had several cases of it in my life. And there was one time when I distinctly recall the sensation to get out and socialize, go see my friends, do whatever, you know. And honestly, you know, Bill's kind of a hermit. Uh, it's true. You know, I, I talk to everybody through a camera, but I'm, I'm not a big one for going out in crowds. You know, I do fine by myself most of the time. I don't need much entertainment. Well, I remember that sensation because for me it was unusual. <laughs> it really is. It's very seldom that I get that sort of a feeling that, oh, I got to go out and rub elbows with everybody I know. You know, uh, yes, yeah, so I recalled it. And when I read the article, I went, oh, man. Um, so, it was a small study, and studying the flu vaccine doesn't necessarily prove that the virus does this. But 
uh, it's a logical assumption. And because the, the epidemiologist that did the study, uh, she knew well that viruses affect the way we think. Now, on this one here, the COVID, um, is that why they call it COVID-19? Uh, I know Donald asked that question a while ago. It was because you start thinking like a 19-year-old. <laughs> yeah, sure. People who are like 50, suddenly they become teenagers all over again. Hey, let's go and run around the streets and set something on fire. Shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so nobody's really brought it up in public that I can find anywhere. This has not been broached. Like I said, I met one man so far who seems to think that this is also possible. I'm, I'm sold because uh, I'm like I said, I'm here in Hawaii where we have almost no cases on this island, and life on the island is pretty normal. <laughs> okay, we're certainly not burning anything and pulling statues down. Okay, I think the only one we got around is Kamehameha anyway, but. Yeah, so it, it, here, from this angle, there seems to be something wrong with people on the mainland. Uh, the reactions are strange, uh, crazy, <laughs> would be one way to put it. Um, and even the freezing by politicians, too, of failure of knowing what to do with an autonomous zone in the middle of Seattle, you know, even the freezing is scary. Um, well, I guess say that, you know, if this virus affects the way we think and it takes us out and wants to make us congregate, which is what people have been doing, they're insisting they're going to congregate. We're going to be on the beach. We're going to the bar. We're going to go to church. We're going to go to Trump's rallies. We're going to be in a parade. You know, we're going to do whatever the heck. We're going to burn Seattle. Um, you know, they're insisting that they're going to get out and congregate. Uh and the insistence is intense enough under the circumstances when we have a, a very, very dangerous disease going on and our economy is at stake and the future of our nation actually under this is at stake. Um, people's reactions seem very strange that they have to get out and pull down statues of Teddy Roosevelt. You know, uh, The reaction is really strange. It really is. There, there's no care, no caution here, uh, no smarts either. And so it, it is so strange that I really, I'm, I'm sold on my, this idea. Um, somebody's going to have to prove to me that it doesn't change the way they think uh, before I'm going to get over this. Uh, because if rabies will do it, and it's a virus, and it obviously makes aggressive behavior in creatures, if flu makes you sociable, and it's a virus, so it can spread itself, I'm telling you that the nuttiness you see across the mainland United States today is 50% because we're nuts. But the rest of it, people being driven nuts by a virus. And once you get some people being driven by a virus to congregate in masses like this, then you have the, the regular social uh, thing, you know, mob rule, mob psychology, where other people are then drawn into this, whether they're sick or not. And uh, so then it manages to spread itself. And so what looks like a social revolution in the United States, where they're piling up all the boxes of Aunt Jemima in front of Mount Rushmore with every statue of the Confederacy they can find and some flags, you know, uh, on top of it, and, and let's throw in some uh, some cream of wheat and Uncle Ben's rice and the whole works, set the whole damn works on fire, tear down all the paintings of the Confederates in the House of Representatives, you know, let's take it all down. It looks like social revolution, but I think what we're looking at is uh, people losing it. And if, if there is any politics in this virus at all, all. If there is any conspiracy here, my guess is that somebody knows that it affects the way we think. I can't be a genius. All right. You know, I'm a pretty smart guy. I can see a lot of things. I tend to think out of the box a lot, but I'm not that smart.
that I'm smarter than all the medical professionals out there. Uh -uh, I don't think so. Um, somebody knows. At least if they don't know, they really suspect. And I think one of the reasons that some of the politicians are so standoff are, you know, oh, let them tear the statues down, sure, you know, get rid of the flags, whatever. You know, I think be they may, at some level, understand this. If you've got everybody's affected <laughs> psychologically by a virus and it's causing them to do insane things, all you got to do is tell them, hey, by the way, you're insane from a virus, you know, and, 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 and come at it that way. That's, that is probably sure to set the country on fire. <laughs> so I think it's a, shh, let's not admit this one. Shh, let's let them think it's about social change. Yeah. That's what I think I see. So if there's a conspiracy here that I'm spreading, then probably that's one of them. That somebody knows. Yeah, someone knows. Someone knows, and they're not talking. They're not talking. Because I had to dig. I mean, I had to have other people come to me, you know, after digging, uh, b before I could actually pull up any of this stuff. Um, and yet it's common medical knowledge. Yeah, common medical knowledge, folks, that viruses change the way you think. I don't think this one's any different. Mm -mm. Uh, we're being duped probably twice. We're being duped by a virus <laughs> because we're thinking we're doing one thing, but we're actually doing the virus's bidding. And two, I think somebody in the government and medicine understands this. But that one's harder to prove. Well, there, aloha, folks. <laughs> Here's Bill's weird message for the day. Uh, I hope you're having a good time over there. Um, burn any good statues lately? <laughs> Hang loose. <laughs>